Welcome to this lecture on mechanical design. My name is Nas Gonim and uh, I'll be talking today about uh, the project uh, for uh, design of high temperature components, which is part of the course on uh, material failure in mechanical design. So I'll uh, give you an idea about the outlines of the core of the project, uh, what we will be expecting to do, and now especially I'm going to emphasize um, one particular project, just go through it from the beginning to the end to show you what um, uh, might be possible. And then I'll just give a big overview on various types of components that uh, can be useful and which you can actually utilize in your uh, designs. You can select from uh, uh, such uh, components or you can uh, come up with your own uh, re-engineered components or even you can select from outside the set that I'm going to discuss today. Uh, so if we look uh, here on uh, what we're trying to achieve, um, I will uh, give a, a project example and this example uh, is uh, related to fusion energy and uh, <clears throat> in uh, fusion energy we uh, need to uh, produce energy by the fusion of uh, uh, two isotopes of uh, hydrogen, deuterium and tritium when they fuse together nuclear, uh, in a nuclear fashion uh, a, the uh, nucleus is split and you get uh, helium and the helium is charged like a charged particle so <clears throat> it will be uh, flying off from the fusion reaction and uh, neutrons and neutrons are not charged so they will not interact readily with materials they can go through materials very easily but the helium which is an ion uh, is charged and therefore it will stop uh, very near to the surface of materials and then there's other forms of energy like x-rays for example or uh, radiant heat that come off. So the idea is that if you look here we have uh, an existing large tokamak and the tokamak is like a big donut and this is the middle post of the donut and uh, you can walk around in this cavity of the donut and uh, here we have a shape that looks like a D shape and the D shape contains a plasma which is a gas and the gas is a mixture of deuterium and tritium and then the helium and the neutrons come off and they strike the central post and they strike the, the side walls. So you have a certain amount of energy that you would like to remove. Uh, part of this energy is going to be uh, deposited on the surface as a surface heat flux uh, from helium and from uh, um, ions and from radiation in general. And then the other part is going to be uh, from neutrons and the neutrons will penetrate deeper into the central post or the side walls and they will be deposited energy over a larger distance. If you look on the right, this is <coughs> a CAD model for a reactor that is being built in France now. It's an international reactor and this reactor is so-called ITER, International Tokamak uh, Experimental Reactor. And uh, in ITER, we have a very large uh, plasma cavity, and the plasma uh, is confined in this cavity. You can see the size of the, of the person here. And uh, the plasma produces this energy, and we need to uh, extract it from the surrounding walls. Now, the surrounding walls, we're going to call them, or they're called... Uh, uh, the first wall that intersects the energy is called first wall and then behind the first wall uh, we have a region that's called a blanket so a blanket is like a term in which we actually extract the energy so it's like a heat exchanger you can see the piping coming in and coming out so the idea is that we would like to design a heat exchanger that can extract the energy uh, from uh, the plasma so here is a design in which we have a very large uh, segment. This is one segment of the torus. It looks like uh, uh, an orange and this is one uh, 
part of the orange and so if you just kind of stack them around then you can get the whole uh, donut uh, and in this segment is huge very large um, it has the plasma in red and then the blue region here is called the scrape off region which doesn't have much gases or, or uh, any material and then you get the gray region is the first wall and then you get a blanket and then there's a, uh, another region uh, with a stabilizing shell and then another uh, blanket. Uh, so this, the sum of these two are called outboard blanket one, outboard blanket two. And then on this side, we have an inboard blanket, uh, which has a structure. So uh, from our perspective here in design, we would like to design a heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is coming from here but it is going to heat the inboard blanket or the outboard blankets. So we will select to design the inboard blanket. And as you can see, it is it has kind of a radius, like you can see it is curved a little bit here because it has to go around. And um, it, we have some major dimensions coming here. And then we will design that uh, segment and the blanket. So it doesn't make sense to actually make a full 3D model for that section because it, it will be uh, extensive in terms of the number of elements, finite elements and the, and the details in it. And also not necessary because we have in the axial direction here, we have kind of symmetry and therefore we don't expect big variations from one uh, Z level to another level. And therefore, we're going to simplify the design by taking a cut. And the cut, you can see here now, this, this is the curve. And the curve is uh, the curve that is causing by the, uh, the, the top section here. So this is curving towards the plasma. So the plasma is here. And this is the curve. So if you look at this, this is the curve here. And the plasma is going to come from this side. So the plasma is going to strike. Uh, the energy is going to be falling on this surface here and uh, this is the alpha particles which is the helium and then we have part of the energy will be deposited here and part will be deposited um, uh, inside uh, the uh, inside deeper here and then also deeper here these are the the yellow is the neutrons that will is, will actually penetrate and will be stopped in these regions so these regions, the red regions here, are made of lithium lead. Lithium lead is a liquid metal that is flowing uh, from the bottom to the top. So this is just a cross section. It's flowing very, very slowly. So we know how to do heat transfer in there. And then we have now the major sources of energy. One is the alpha particles on the surface here, giving you a surface heat flux of approximately half a megawatt per meter square and then the neutrons which we have a distribution function of the energy that's exponential so the energy is high in the beginning and then goes lower 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 like that so we have actually a distribution function uh, for that energy that is given to us um, so the problem that we want is that we have surface heat flux and we have volumetric heating coming in and then we need to design the structure for cooling. So what we have already is the uh, this coolant here, which is liquid metal. So this is given uh, to us, all of this uh, region is here. And uh, then we need to flow um, another coolant so that we can actually uh, cool uh, the, um, uh, the first wall. And the best way is to flow uh, helium from, in, from this side and then have it into pipes and then the helium will turn around, pick up the heat and then continue going on here and then we'll turn around and continue to exit on this side. So this is kind of a one way to do the cooling. Of course, we have to design all of this pathway so that we can have uniform uh, heating of the first wall. So what we'll do is that we will flow the helium from one side and then reverse it uh, on the other side uh, under it. So we'll have alternating channels uh, for helium cooling. 
And then the blue uh, regions here are also going to be helium cooling, but uh, this is a cross section, so the coolant is going flowing upward. Um, so with that kind of detail, what we need to do is we want to combine uh, a number of uh, uh, items and uh, what we will do is we will actually um, have the uh, items that we will combine. Uh, we will uh, do a multi-physics modeling. So the first step is to uh, do a complete CAD model, which you can see here, these are just pipes that are flowing in one direction and then the other direction, uh, so you can alternate the pipes. You will see the design detail when you have a chance. And uh, then you uh, will take that and uh, we'll do the meshing for the entire 3D model. And then we are ready to do multi-physics. And the multi-physics that we will do in this project, we will try to combine fluid flow and uh, heat transfer in fluids and then uh, once we determine the temperature distribution of the fluids, then the fluid is going to give its heat or take the heat from the solid. So we have to couple it from the heat transfer from the solid. And then we would have a complete temperature distribution in the structure itself. Once we know the temperature distribution of structure, then we could uh, take that as input to give us the uh, thermal strains and also to give us the pressure that induces the mechanical loading and we combine uh, the mechanical loading which we will call primary loading with the thermal strains which we'll call secondary loading we combine them together and perform uh, an analysis uh, for uh, failure so in this case uh, if we go back to here um, we will see that uh, we actually have uh, achieved this uh, in combining uh, a number of modules uh, from COMSOL. One module is called non-isothermal fluid, and this module can, is a combination of uh, fluid mechanics and uh, thermal uh, analysis in the fluid. So this is kind of a combined uh, two modules in one. And that gives us a heat transfer uh, to the wall, and then the heat transfer to the wall is going to give us uh, we're going to use another module coupled that is called heat transfer in solids. And uh, the heat transfer in solids can give us the temperature distribution and the strains. And uh, non-isothermal fluid can give us the pressure distribution and mechanical loading. So we have thermal loading, mechanical loading. We combine that into solid mechanics uh, module. And the solid mechanics module can predict for us the distribution of primary stresses and the secondary stresses and in between those we should be able to analyze uh, failure criteria. So the equations we solve in these multi-physics modules are conservation of uh, mass um, and then conservation of momentum which is Navier-Stokes equation and uh, then conservation of energy uh, in the fluid. So these are three equations that are solved uh, in the fluid module. And then in the uh, heat transfer and solve module, we solve uh, the transient heat transfer equation uh, where we have a conduction uh, and we have also a uh, term for the uh, production of uh, heat uh, volumetrically uh, due to the neutrons. So this is volumetric and then through the boundary conditions we can impose a heat flux. And then this is in addition to the stress analysis module in which we have equilibrium equation like the divergence of the stress is equal to the force and body force and this is also Solve. So what we will study in the course is a formulation of these equations, how they come about, and what we use for uh, their boundary conditions and utilization. So once we do that, then what we will see is the, from the simulation process, we have several, several steps. One is the solid works, which is a CAD model for 
our system and our system now is really a subsystem because we extracted a component out of a very large uh, type of structure. So the component is cooled. It has a now uh, like an elbow and it continues this way and it's meshed. So we have the meshing. We have to learn also how to do effective meshing so that we can get uh, good uh, results. And uh, the fluid simulation gives a, give us, for example, the, uh, the flow lines, uh, the streamlines of the fluid, and they give us the pressure distributions also. And uh, the fluid combined with the thermal in the fluid give us the temperature distributions in uh, the fluid, as you can see here, CFD module. And then we combine that with a heat transfer and solid mechanics module in which we can get the temperature distributions in the uh, component and the stress distribution uh, in the component. Uh, so uh, typical results we see, uh, I will review typical, typical results uh, in which uh, we have uh, various uh, results that uh, we will discuss. So we're going to see that the results will be uh, divided into uh, various groups. We'll uh, have results for fluid flow distributions, uh, including uh, streamlines, uh, flow um, distributions that can be optimized for a particular module, uh, pressure distributions, uh, and, and so forth. So from that, we will get knowledge on how to optimize the component to figure out whether the flow is sufficient or the pressure is sufficient to push the fluid and uh, to uh, through the uh, the component. And uh, the second part is going to be thermal. So we'll have thermal analysis for the temperature inside the fluid and also thermal field uh, in the solid itself. And then the combination of those should be sufficient to give us an input, uh, both mechanical and the thermal to, to drive the analysis for the stresses. And um, at the first level, as you will see in this project, uh, we will do thermal and, and the elastic, thermoelastic stress analysis, and we'll also do primary stress analysis. Primary means uh, that you have external loads that um, uh, actually impose uh, deformation on the system and um, the secondary it means that we have a source for example from thermal that can induce stresses so if you take the thermal field out uh, then the uh, it's self equilibrating in other words there's no uh, external force to uh, to equilibrate it but if you have a primary if you put a force on a system then you have to have some reaction somewhere to to equilibrate it, and then the stresses will redistribute themselves inside the material. These are two types of uh, um, effects on the solid that can lead to the two, diff two kinds of different kinds of failure that we will study later on. So the level that we study first is the elastic, and the elastic analysis uh, can be used in most cases with some conservative. Uh, figure of merits or some conservative design code uh, approaches uh, to uh, guarantee that we have no failure uh, at the expense of large safety factors. Uh, so most of the designs they stop at uh, the elasto, elasto, thermal, thermal elastic type analysis and application of conservative uh, uh, rules from the design code. However, in most of the components that we're going to be looking for, we're looking for high performance and pushing the envelope to higher temperatures. And uh, therefore, we cannot afford using extreme safety factors. In addition, if we have transients or off-normal conditions, uh, then uh, we need to know what happens to the structure. And in such cases, we may not have failure, but we can have significant deformation or repair conditions. And under all of these conditions, we need to include analysis based on plasticity. So we have plastic deformation and creep and fracture. And that's kind of the, the core of this course. So 
if we go back to uh, checking on the uh, results, we have a pressure distribution getting in at 8 megapascal and then coming out at 7.97. So there's a little bit of pressure drop in here. And this uh, uh, drives the very high speed uh, flow of helium. We chose to use uh, helium gas for some reasons. Um, and the distribution of velocity, if you take cross sections, you can see the distributions are zero close to the walls, no slip conditions, and inside you have very high velocity. The velocity is quite substantial going above 100 meters per second, so this is very, very high speed uh, flow. Uh, and the idea is that we need to have high heat transfer coefficient, and uh, that may or may not be the, uh, uh, well optimized because you need high uh, pressure to drive the system. So there's some optimization that goes on. The uh, temperature distributions in, in the structure, this is a stainless steel structure, uh, the, almost of the blue, and in these white holes here, we have this liquid lithium lead, which is also hot and moving very, very slowly. Uh, so the first wall here is what we have, and the first wall we have tubes inside. One tube going, the flow is going from left to right, and another tube is going from right to left. The idea is that if we go uh, crisscross like that, then uh, we distribute the heat a little bit more uh, uniformly, and you get the maximum temperatures to be in the middle of the module like that. So you have a temperature distribution in the structure. This is F82H, which is an alloy, a steel alloy. And the maximum temperature is about 550 degrees. This is the upper limit uh, of the steel uh, alloy in this case. And uh, the liquid lithium lead, we did heat transfer also. We consider it in this case as a solid because it's moving very, very slowly. So you can see that the neutrons will make it hotter here and a little bit cooler here and the maximum is 770 degrees. And with that, we now can analyze uh, the primary stress distribution and, uh, and, uh, and the deformations. These are deformations exaggerated from the primary stress distributions. And the deformations are uh, superimposed, so you can have the uh, initial configuration uh, or the reference configuration and the current configuration, as you can see here, superimposed. And um, that gets us now to the next level, as you can go that deeper into the details. And this is, these are the fl uh, flow channels for the cross flow, uh, going from bottom to the top. And you can see the temperature distributions uh, leading to uh, variations of the stresses. And therefore, we could do some optimizations by rounding these corners here. So the tube is not, doesn't have very sharp corners. Like you can see, all of this can be eliminated by one additional design um, iteration. And um, uh, now we can look at the total di di displacement due to the primary uh, stress, which is uh, driven by the pressure. And it's only very, very small, like 0.18 times 10 to the minus 3, so it's very small deformation indeed because the pressure is still not very high. Uh, and you get details about von Mises stress at the critical locations and try to assess uh, the failure in these locations. Now you turn your attention to the secondary or the thermal stress uh, and you have to, uh, to model the constraints in, the, in your component. So the constraint here we uh, uh, we use the roller constraint. Um, uh, you have to argue why you need a roller constraint because you, you have this little pieces connected to everything else and therefore you have a boundary condition to, that can be important, has important implications uh, on the distributions of stressors. So the secondary, you have uh, maximum of 170 megapascal and you get significant thermal expansion uh, from uh, the uh, thermal stress because this is a, a very large piece and therefore the large piece is going to expand and not only that but if you take cross sections here uh, in the cooling channels because the heat is coming from the left then you get uh, very high 
uh, thermal stresses uh, in the channel in the wall channels and therefore if you look at the deformation the deformation the this is the current configuration and this is the reference configuration the current config configuration moved by about four millimeters which is half a centimeter and therefore that's very important when you when you put this piece of the orange to the next piece that we have a little gap so that we can we do not include uh, compressive stresses and potential buckling uh, when the modules are assembled together. And then you get uh, statistics about uh, temperatures, pressures, the velocities, heat transfer coefficients, and then the next step in the design, although it is all elastic at this point, is to use a design code. And the design code that we have, I might want to just kind of uh, uh, show that the design code that we have is um, going to be uh, set. We have many design codes that are available. Uh, the most significant one is the ASME code for design. And uh, we have also, for many components, we use the military uh, handbook for design. So we'll show these uh, uh, codes. They have rules established by committees for many, many years based on this experience. Um, and uh, the uh, ASME uh, design handbook is a basis that has been used to uh, develop more specialized uh, design codes. So, for example, uh, we have uh, one code here is the pressure vessel uh, design, uh, design for guides and procedures. I will have this available online. And here you have uh, many procedures for design. You can see just uh, all of the different procedures for designing a pressure vessel. And uh, the main code is called the ASME, Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code section. They have many sections, and here is section 8. Um, so that's kind of the basis, as I mentioned, uh, to, for uh, specialized codes. And one of the specialized codes is uh, the design uh, for structural design criteria for in-vessel components. In-vessel is inside the, the main vessel of the reactor. And this vessel is for the International Tokamak Experimental Reactor. So it's called SDCIC. So this code is more advanced uh, based on the ASME and uh, it, it deals with many features that you should have uh, in your uh, design. For example, um, as we will see a little bit later, uh, we the features for the components, uh, we have uh, different definitions of damage. Uh, this is M damage, uh, is um, monotonic uh, loading, and then there's C damage, which is uh, kind of intermittent, um, and it, it defines many of the uh, phenomena leading to failure about plastic collapse, plastic instability, and so on. And uh, not only that, but uh, you uh, have uh, to uh, kind of guarantee against many different types of failure. Here's the C, uh, it denotes uh, cyclic, so we have both uh, M and C types of damage that we have to guard against in designing high temperature components. And there might be some special effects, for example, irradiation effects or corrosion effects on material properties that must be taken into account. Uh, one important aspect in your design, when you consider the, the design, is uh, the uh, operational envelope. What are you designing for? And in this case, uh, there are three different, uh, four different types of loading categories. Category one uh, is called normal operation, and uh, the criteria level is A, which means that we, have, we must design for it, absolutely. And then there's an... Uh, Category two is a, is a likely loading, which comes from transients or off normal conditions. We call it upset, but it is within the design envelope. So these can severely change the conditions of the component that may be repaired. So it's still level A. 
But then we have unlikely loading and extremely unlikely loading. Unlikely loading is emergency, so the system has to shut down and the component will be replaced or changed. And the unlikely uh, scenario, we have a fault and the fault will have to be the total system is again shut down and complete replacement is uh, guaranteed. So if we go back to uh, our system here, these are uh, design rules that are pulled out of that manual and uh, they have different, uh, for example, we have uh, allowable primary membrane stress and we separate the stress into membrane and uh, bending and total and we also separate them into uh, thermal or secondary and primary so all of these features we will learn in the course but basically you have a set of rules based on conservative assumptions and safety factors for example the safety factor here is three the safety factor here is uh, 1.5 and then the, uh, uh, these are material properties, ultimate strength, for example, of the material. And then you have some allowance for uh, triaxiality and, uh, and, and irradiation conditions. So the code is based on strength. So you have to satisfy strength criteria. And then we have to satisfy fracture criteria as we learn in the course. And um, we get material data. This is the K1C. This is the fracture toughness as a function of temperature, the stress, uh, the strength as a function of temperature, and uh, as a function of damage also the strength can vary. And we use such data and the design rules, the previous design rules, to come up with factors of safety. And the factor of safety, we inspect the structure at different locations. This location here, this location here, we call it path. So we have path one, two, three, and we investigate uh, whether what is the factor of safety guarding against a particular failure criteria that we have. So uh, with this, I think I'm going to uh, address the other issues in the design uh, as soon as we uh, uh, look into more uh, options that we have. So what I covered uh, now is uh, a very quick run uh, in one of the projects, kind of uh, half completed, because you can see we just completed up to uh, elastic analysis, thermal and mechanical. And then we need to invoke plasticity, viscoplasticity, and go beyond that and show that under these conditions we have viable design. So what I'll do is in the next lecture, I'll give you options, a variety of options that we will use uh, to uh, select a particular uh, component and, and the design. I'll leave it up to you to, to do the selection uh, and uh, we will have this uh, for next time. As you can see, I started here with the jet engines, but let's do that as soon as uh, we um, actually uh, 